thanks for taking the time to do this and also doing the workshops and yeah it was it's so much fun like I had so much fun it's nice just being around creatives that maybe do the same thing as you but also different things as you and you just kind of feed off of each other and it's just it's a huge honor and it's been really super fun to work with people that know what they're doing and like just are doing it and it's just like a collective of artists that are just supporting each other and it feels awesome yeah I think you know that could be just a symptom of you know people um i guess just a change of times and like the gallery model changing and just i guess people's potentially people's disdain for like um uh the commerce side of art yeah We're you know all banding together like we'll figure it out just yeah <laughs> we'll do it just yeah we'll stick together and something will happen yeah i think there's something really punk rock about that in a way <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah, it's still kind of like a, like you know, like damn the man kind of thing. Even mm -hmm. though it's like, who are we getting? Who are we like shaking our fists at? We're just like, who knows? We'll, but we'll just like have our little community and we'll we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. We don't really. Ha we're not like shaking our fists at anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but just like as a whole, just like we're over this and we're over that, and like yeah, there's nothing else to do. But we want to keep making stuff, mm -hmm. so we're going to. It also feels more connected too, because creating art in general can be, unless you're a director and working on film sets, it still can feel isolating yeah. in terms of the creation of the idea and then executing it. Um, but I think being an artist in general, it's such a insular and essential, it could be, you know, an isolating sort yeah, of totally experience. Isolating yeah. and like just secluded and you're in your brain all day and like you, first of all you have to be like okay up there like to be alone with yourself that much but yeah. then yeah since we're all alone with our thoughts and like trying to create things like it is nice the community to yeah. have that like resonated in other people but then also like make stuff together so like you have your separate ideas and you're like hey man like check this out like what do you think of this and then mm -hmm. it, it like becomes something else that you don't even you had no control over you just were like wow watch that like become a thing and yeah so like like you're saying like the kind of isolating thing but then it's nice to have a community of artists that are just maybe not on the same path as you but just upward trying to go upward trying to be better trying to just keep going because it's all we have yeah keep the dream alive yeah keep it alive. <laughs> <laughs> well speaking speaking of the dream so how did you get started into creating artwork and what drew you to um wanting to be an artist um i mean when i was a kid i was always like drawing and like playing around but you know it's just like little kid stuff mm -hmm. um i didn't start doing art until maybe eight years ago i met a person that was an artist and i didn't really know you could just be an artist i was like well what do you really do <laughs> like mm. just like everybody else gets like but well, how do you make your money like do you do you work at starbucks or whatever like mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with Starbucks. Cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Starbucks. yeah. Um, yeah, but like, but what are you actually doing to supplement your income or whatever? Like, I, d I had no idea. I was, you know, the same as everybody else thinking that. And like being introduced to other artists that are making a living doing art in some capacity. And so I was like, well, if you can do it, then I can do it. And so I just spent a year and a half or two years just really, really trying to figure out what I was doing. Um, I started off like I really wanted to make monsters and creepy things and stuff out of my imagination, but not really that creative, so I couldn't just make it up. Plus, like uh -huh. I didn't have a basis in reality, like um, like I didn't have the techniques of realism, so I couldn't just make it up without knowing realism. And so the more I was making art, the like you know like little stepping stones will happen like you'll be like oh okay I figured that out now I can get better at this but it, it took a long time and it was like 10 11 12 hours a day of just working non-stop like trying so hard to get better and yeah how would you educate yourself um I would uh like I would go through like tumblr or like look at art books or whatever just see whatever I was attracted to which is mostly like I was looking at fashion magazines or I would look at like 
I don't even know what I, like art books I was looking at, but I was just like, well, maybe I can try that. And I would try to like, you know, um, either draw mm -hmm. the face that I was seeing in a magazine or draw, you know, like something that was similar, like a master copy kind of thing. Before I knew what a master copy was, I was just like trying to figure out how are you guys doing it. And then eventually I just stopped looking at stuff because I really am sensitive to like, I don't want anybody to think I'm stealing their work. Like I'm not trying to be like any other artist. I really just like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's, I'm not trying to say what other people have said. Like mm -hmm. I'm just trying to do my own thing. So I just took everything like off my walls, like no inspiration, like visually, like while I'm working and then just kept trying to get better at realism, like try to make this face, this portrait, this figure look like the figure. Mm. And so I would just keep going with that. And then eventually I kind of came into an organic sense of what I'm doing now. Mm. So it's like very portrait based, very like dramatic lighting, very, um, I don't know, I, I try to make it as theatrical and minimal as possible, like both like really making it dramatic without saying a lot, if that makes sense. So yeah. um, that's, I think, why I love charcoal so much is because it's just stripped down to simplicity. And mm -hmm. but then also you can say a lot like there's no like there's room for error, but it's like you have to really like build like the relationship with that piece of depth and what you're trying to say, but mm -hmm. in like a very small amount of words mm. i guess yeah that makes sense so that's i started like kind of coming into oh i, I want to make art like this and so that's how it all kind of came about and so it took about two years for me to get to a place where it's like oh that looks like a person mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and just kept going and going from there mm -hmm. and yeah i'm still yeah. still learning still trying to figure it out 